when you think about ghosting somebody in any area of your life, think about would you do it if they were directly in front of you? How to blow up bridges like a moron because you are an immature little child. That's what kids do. Children do this. It's not natural if you're a freaking professional. You are struggling in an area where you need more character. That's what's going on. Children get angry and stick their lip out, take their toy to their room, slam the door, suck their thumb, and the rest of the world is irrelevant. Put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants. It's time for another hot take from Ken Coleman, and this is in regards to ghosting recruiters and employers. And he essentially says that if you do that, you are lacking character and you're a child. When you think about ghosting somebody in any area of your life, think about would you do it if they were directly in front of you? How can you ghost someone if you're in front of them, Ken? Now ask yourself, how courageous am I? You're not courageous at all. So if you've ever ghosted someone, you're blowing up bridges. It's like a moron. Now let's talk about Ken for a second. Ken over here working with Dave Ramsey, giving career advice. And I think for the most part, I want to say that we are on the same page. I really do. Like I've, I've watched your other videos, Ken, where you're giving advice similar to what I would say. Like some guy's calling in, should I quit my job? And you're like, nah, probably don't do that unless you got another job lined up. What are you going to do with your finances? Like that advice, it makes sense to me. And then every once in a while, I don't want to say it, but the, the boomer comes out in you where it's like you've never experienced modern work life before. Have you ever been ghosted by a recruiter before, Ken? Have you ever been ghosted by a company before after you've gone through the multiple stages of interviewing, you've done all of their tests and you've tried really hard to get the job and they just stop responding to you? Does that mean that the companies and recruiters also are children and are lacking character? Because you don't make that statement at all in this video. You're just putting it on the worker saying that we're immature and stupid when it makes you look like you've never experienced being ghosted after putting your heart and soul into getting a job that you thought you were going to get. The great ghosting trend of people quitting and not telling their bosses. What? By the way, another alternative headline here is how to blow up bridges like a moron. So here's the thing with giving a, a two weeks notice. Companies don't have to give you a two weeks notice, so why should you give them a two week notice? And one of the company handbooks I just read on this channel a few videos back, it said, if you give us a two weeks notice, it depends on how much we like you, if you get to stay those two weeks or not. So why would you ever do that? Why would you ever hand over your playbook to the other team and, and let them know that you're trying to leave? Just just go leave. Like, chances are, when you give your two weeks, they just fire you on a spot anyways, unless they really like you, which is dumb but I see no reason to give a two weeks notice. Do they come to you and say, hey, we're gonna fire you in two weeks? No, they just say, hey, bye, see you later. Or they send you a message when you're at home that says, don't bother coming into work on Monday. Isn't that the equivalent of ghosting? So you gotta see it from both sides, Ken. It happens to us. We're doing it because it happens to us. We don't want it to be this way. We don't wanna have to ghost people. We wish we could communicate back and forth. But when you meet one of those recruiters that promises you the world and you go through all their steps, and then they say nothing or they just disappear, you're gonna do what's best for you. And that's what recruiters do. And that's what companies do. Recruiters are just gonna find the best candidate and, and ghost all the other ones that aren't a good fit. Like ideally the good ones would reach out and say, hey, we found someone with a better fit. But most recruiters are just like in the car sales business, right? They're selling humans to companies and they get a cut off the top. So it makes sense. Like if someone else comes at the end and says, oh, look, I'm the best candidate. I can get the most money. Well, then the recruiter gets the most money. And so then he just, you know, buy everybody else. And that's, that's what they do. But it makes it seem like you've never experienced this, Ken. And that's what I mean with like the boomer take. It's like you've never experienced being ghosted. You've never experienced giving your two weeks and them saying, you know what, just leave. You've never experienced any of that stuff. Maybe you have, maybe you have. But when you say stuff like that, just so one-sided that employees lack character in our children when they ghost. What about the companies and recruiters, Ken? Side note, I'd just like to add here, sometimes burning the bridge or blowing up the bridge, as Ken says, lights the way forward. Blind found that employees are quitting a job without telling their manager or company's human resources in the last year and a half. Why, why would they do that? Most likely because they hate their job and they hate their boss and they feel no need to give you the respect of saying, you know what, I'm not coming in anymore because they don't even deserve that communication. That's how much they hate their job. And this happens more often than you think, Ken. Not everyone has a nice cushy job doing what we do here, okay? So we've heard about the great resignation. Is there a great ghosting trend? We get classy people calling the Ken Coleman show. I can't tell if he says that out of sarcasm. We get classy people like 
You know the types that call, or if he's being genuine. Always asking me, Ken, how do I quit? So people are thinking the two-week notice. That's the traditional way to quit, right? Traditions, that tradition is trash, okay? That, that tradition specifically is trash. I could see if you really respect your job and your boss, and you've just wanted to move somewhere else, then yes, go ahead and give them that two weeks. But still, they could fire you on the same day. It's like, companies don't come to you like that. They don't give you a three-month, hey, we're going to let you go. It's just, hey, bye, budget's changed. Position's no longer uh, available. doesn't exist anymore. I'm going to give my resignation letter and give two weeks' notice. And there's a, usually a conversation involved. And then human resources will ask you for an exit interview. This has become a thing, right? Exit interviews, by the way, are just bait. Don't do the exit interview. Don't say anything more than you need to. Just reserve your right to remain silent and just be like, no, thanks. Bye. So I formally resign. I have a conversation. We try to be polite. We don't blow up bridges. And then, you know, if we agree to an exit interview. I don't understand. This, this whole concept of well, let's, let's keep our bridges here if you ever need them. Like, I, what if you just don't? actually care about that bridge there's only so many bridges right and so sometimes blowing one up lights the way forward and that's just is what it is you just pretending to be nice to maintain a bridge so that you can have a reference is in my opinion stupid because i'm not going to give you a reference to someone that i know that hates me why w why would you do that they're they're, they're going to call your reference and your reference is going to shit all over you and you're not going to be there for that phone call right they're uh, they're not legally allowed to talk trash about you when someone calls the reference but how will you know that you're not there you're just waiting to see if you get the job or not so this whole like you got to give a good reference to your last company why would i do that if i hate my job and i know my job hates me why would i why would i care <laughs> but here's the deal people are going i don't even want to have the initial conversation I don't want to do a letter of resignation and have to sit down and look at my boss in the eye and tell him it's not me. I mean, it's not you, it's me, right? That's a level of confrontation. It's not the, it's not you, it's me. No, it's definitely you. It's definitely you, company. That's why I, I'm not even giving you the respect of saying I'm not coming in anymore. These people hate their jobs that much that they don't, they don't think the person there deserves that conversation. That's why they're doing it. It's, it's pretty easy to understand when you have a soul-crushing job a soul crushing manager but i was th this is the one painful moment for me that i'm never gonna let go because this part he starts talking about how a girl dumped him and she was crying it's, it's kind of a weird way to relate to ghosting employers but here even a girl in college she blindsides me one night dumped me in the midst of giant crocodile tear sobs to which i wanted to say shouldn't i be the one crying right now i illustrate to say that the emotions that she was going through are the same emotions that a lot of workers feel when they got to sit down with their boss and say, it's not you, it's me, I'm leaving. It is a form of confrontation and people don't like it. And so what are they doing? They just... He's basically saying you can't handle confrontation. You don't have the cojones to handle a confrontation. That's why people ghost because you're just, you're not courageous. That, those are his words, right? Like, well, Ken, to be honest, some people just aren't. And you know what, Ken? That's okay. Not everyone likes confrontation. Not everyone wants to do it. And because they choose to avoid that, doesn't mean that they're children or that they're lacking character. They just leave. Gone. I'm out. No resignation letter. No meeting. Just, we're gone. Good. Bye. See you later. Who cares? Who cares? They clearly don't respect the job enough to do that. I think most people, if they do, then they would do that. But these people that are doing it, hate their jobs, they're probably being treated trash at their job, so they just leave. The company doesn't get to have that last word, you know? And that's pretty much all we can do as employees. We can just stop showing up, just stop coming. You, you, know, you don't get to boss me around anymore. I'm done with you. Just disappear, go get a new job. And that makes sense. That makes sense to me, Ken. Don't show up. Where are you? You sick? Crickets. This is what's going on. And I guess people are justifying this uh, by saying, well, if they fired me, they wouldn't sit down and, well, yeah, they do. They tell you, they talk to you. Cisco, JP Morgan, Oracle, professionals from those companies were t more than twice as likely as other professionals to say they left the job without telling their current employer. Respondents to the survey who work at Facebook, Indeed, Intuit, and Uber, again, these are major companies. Like that means anything. Ken. Just because the company is huge doesn't mean that you have to give it more respect than any other company. Like just because it's a brand name, household name, lots of people work there, it doesn't mean those people still don't hate their jobs. So what? So what? They 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 work there, so you're expecting some sort of 
professionalism, some sort of honor, I guess, as, as you might think of it, some sort of tradition. Now, who cares? It's just a company. It doesn't matter how big the company is. It doesn't matter how prestigious the company is. If you hate your job, you hate your boss, you hate your life, then you're just going to leave and find something else that's better for you. And they don't deserve to know why. I'm sure, actually, I'm sure most employees try to explain to their bosses and their managers in HR what the problem is, but nothing ever happens. No solutions ever uh, get made for them. And no, like, no help is ever given to those employees. And so they just get fed up and they get tired and they just leave. You know what? I don't even have to have this conversation anymore. And to be honest, Ken, I think <laughs> that way of dealing with things is probably better. There's no sense in going in and just creating confrontation for no reason. It doesn't mean that you're lacking character if you choose not to have a confrontation. Nearly 30% of professionals who participated in this study said they skipped a job interview or stopped communicating with a company during the interview process. A verified Amazon professional who was considering a job offer said, you ready for this? This is a direct quote. Amanda, this is going to blow your mind. Because she's, by the way, Amanda's on the other side of the glass going, I can't even believe this because Amanda's a decent human being. You've ever ghosted someone before? You're not a decent human being. That's it's essentially what you're implying, Ken. It's easy to read between the lines here, you know? The people behind you, behind the glass in the control center, just nodding their heads. Wow, I can't believe people are just not responding anymore. Has it ever happened to you? Like I said at the beginning of the video, have you ever gone through the process to just get ghosted? Because it happens both ways, Ken. Some of your advice, right, I think is, is fantastic, but then some of it is just so unrelatable so out of touch it makes it seem like you just haven't experienced the world like the rest of us have and i'm not the only one here before i even made this video the comments of the video are also saying that right it's called cause and effect maybe treat employees and potential hires the way they would like to be treated for a change management treating people like crap has consequences a lot of workers are fed up it's like this guy has no clue to the amount of resentment the American worker has for most employers. I worked at JP Morgan and saw it all the time when someone would do the right thing by giving a formal notice, they'd be escorted out the same day. I will quit a job that doesn't get paid the bills or even financially support me, good. We have another Josh here, ghosting a job is definitely unjustified in any manner, no. No, it's not, it's really not. It's not your company, right? So you just work there. If you don't like it anymore, <laughs> how much do you respect them is the question. Most bridges are worth burning these days. Funny how managers never give you notice when they lay you off. I can't count the number of times I've applied for a job, tailored a perfect cover letter, and followed up to try to get an interview, only to be greeted by crickets. How does this video have 209 thumbs up when it's just so out of touch? I, I don't get it, Ken. I don't, why do you say these things? Why do you say these things? Like, can we have like a little, like a snippet where you try to apply to jobs for the first time in probably like 30 years? And you see what it's like to jump through all of these hoops. Like we're talking, Olympic gold medal gymnastics hoops that you have to jump through just to be able to talk to someone Like I'd love to see you do it and 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 give me your experience on what it's like getting ghosted now Obviously, you know, this wouldn't be a fair experiment because people know you and they just give you the job and you'd be like Oh, it's easy. See look I had no problem reneg if you get something better Not all bridges matter. That's true. Not all bridges matter and and Ken That's true like, just look at just look at me and my family, right? Like, I'm sure you would say, oh, those bridges matter, right? But they don't. Not all bridges matter. Especially if it's a job you hate and you never want to see or talk to or look at or even think about again. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Burning bridges light the way. Don't be stupid, right? Don't, don't be dumb about it, but sometimes that's just the way it is. I just don't get it. Not all bridges matter. So we are now in the blowing up of bridges. They are engaging with recruiters, going, yeah, I'm super interested in it, having phone calls, yep. and then literally disappearing. That, yeah, the recruiter does that. That's what you mean, right? That's what you mean? Yeah, you're, you're engaging, you're excited about it, and then literally they disappear. Who is the they? It's most of the time it's the recruiter. So when that happens to you enough, you just become fed up with it and you, and you do what's best for you. Having interviews set up and not showing up, follow up, nothing. And so it doesn't matter, right? So you go to the interviews and you follow up and you keep going through the, the process with the recruiter and then nothing. Fred, you, what, what about that part, Ken, where you go through the entire process and you're expecting that job offer and nothing? It goes both ways, Ken. Well, I love to get to the heart of a matter. And okay. I'm going to suggest to you the crazy stuff you just heard where we are just conscience free blowing up bridges it, burning bridges is one thing we're talking about boom gone the culprits of this kind of behavior is technology and social media 
Here we go. So we start off with how Ken is just discovering the internet and how people can anonymously comment. Let's listen to Ken discover how anonymity on the internet works. We go on social media and we fire an insult at somebody because of what they said or did. And we, we, we unleash evil in the comment section and we- Wait, hold, wait, hold on. So would my video about you before, the one that you deleted, by the way, one where you, would my video responding to you be considered unleashing evil? Because I, I, I just disagree with you, Ken. We have no repercussions to that at all. Zero. I'm here on the keyboard. You are a miserable human being. Die. That's not what, that's not what everyone on the internet does that disagrees with someone, Ken. People leave thoughtful, very helpful critiques of content all the time anonymously. And it doesn't, come on. And we leave it there and it's like, there's no consequence to that. We're never going to see them. We're not in their presence. When we say some absurdity like that, all consequences and tension that exists when we are face to face in a room with somebody disappears. Isn't that a good thing though? Isn't that a good thing? Why bring unnecessary tension into something that doesn't need to have it? You're suggesting that if you don't do that, you're a child. You can't handle the tension and confrontation. Well, can, not everyone can, but not everyone thinks they deserve the respect to even get that. And then some people are just, you know, the employers have it coming. And so they go in and say their piece and then they probably get fired anyway. So it's just a little out of touch. So technology and social media has now trained us and has removed the tension, has removed the conflict. The same girl that dumped me in tears in the car would have zero problem taking a shot at me on social media. How do you know that, Ken? And honestly, for a lot of people, it's easier to say what they're thinking in a text message or something like that than it is face to face because of what you're saying, because they can't because they can't do it. And just because they can't do it doesn't, again, mean that they're lacking courage or that they're a child. Some people just can't get their words out. They can't think clearly. It makes them nervous. So why go through that? So why create confrontation if you're going to say the same thing anyways? So it's like you, you want to bring this emotional stuff in and, and why? None of that needs to happen. Just, it, it doesn't. It's just a job. Your job is not your family. It's not your, your mom and dad, it's just a job. You work there, that's all. You don't need to have confrontation to be to, to quit your job or to be a, a good human. I have lived my life in a way in where there is an area of my life, a zone, if you will, social media and technology means that I've, all, I've done all this communication over email or LinkedIn or whatever, whatever, and I don't ever have to see this person. If I ghost them now, they can call me a million times, leave a million voicemails. I'm not gonna see them at the grocery store. I'm not gonna see them in the hallway. They're on the other side of the country. You are no longer a person to me. You are a ghost. Poof, out. So now that has crept over into everyday life. So because, because social media and your ability to leave comments anonymously, but that has led you to ghosting employers. I, to be honest, people have been ghosting employers way before the internet even existed. I'm sure there are a lot of people way before you and I were born, Ken, that just said, you know what? I don't get paid enough for this shit and they just quit and they just leave and that's what's happening now but now people are just writing about it and you're learning about it i work at a place in a building and i'm gonna leave at 5 30 one day and never show up again you know how you know how many times i thought about that every day i drove home from work ken you know how many times i thought about that and i'm sure a lot more people think that too they they, they they're sitting in commute on the way home just thinking this ain't worth it I shouldn't go in tomorrow. What would happen if I just keep going and I just drive on the green lights, just go straight until I end up somewhere else where I don't have to go back to this hellhole the next day. You know how many people think that? Probably a lot, Ken. No courtesy, no professionalism. That doesn't mean that they're lacking professionalism because they don't want to talk to you, Ken. But the reality is that kind of stuff is going to catch up. It's going to find you. It's going to catch up to you. And when you realize that you need it more than you thought you would need it, a reference is not going to be there because you are an immature little child. Do you think the people that do this can actually care? Do you think the people that hate their job so much actually care about using them as a reference? Because I can bet you that these people probably thought it out. And I think that you're coming at it from the angle of people are just doing this without thinking about it. And there's just no consequences for anyone. But Ken, most people seriously consider just you know what i'm just not going to come in tomorrow that's how much i hate it i just I'm, I'm treated poorly i don't like what i'm doing i can't get any change around here and so they just stop you know because they think that you just don't even deserve you don't even deserve to talk to me you don't even deserve to get to 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 treat me this way anymore so you know what bye 
And just because I don't want to create confrontation by coming in and looking at you in the face and saying, I'm done, bye. It doesn't make me less of a person, Ken. Children get angry and stick their lip out and march away, take their toy to the room, slam the door, suck their thumb, and the rest of the world is irrelevant. That's what kids do. Children do this. It and you know what adults do? They don't come into work or they stop responding and they get a new job. They don't just go and suck their thumb and take their toy and sit in their room all mad. No, they, they go and get a new job and find somewhere that respects them. It's not natural if you're a freaking professional. Your gatekeeping professionalism right now, Ken. Your gatekeeping professionalism so hard. But I'm going to tell you, I can't solve it. I wish I could. I'm telling you that if you want to solve it, then tell companies to respond to applicants all the way through the process. Tell recruiters to respond to applicants even when they don't make it. Tell recruiters to stop making candidates jump through 900 hoops only to get told nothing and disappear. That If you want to solve it, it starts on your end. It's not on our end, Ken. We're not doing this. We'd love to work for you. We would love it. We would, that's why we're applying to you, right? And then you ghost us. Okay, so clearly you don't respect me enough to even say you're not a fit. So, you know what? It goes both ways, Ken. That's that's what you're, that's the fatal flaw here. You're, you're missing the viewpoint <laughs> from us. The next time you feel like you're just going to make a commitment online or fire a comment at somebody on social media, next time you want to take a shot at me, because you know me, the stuff I'm doing here is super controversial, and I'm just a bad guy helping people find and, and live those dreams. Next time you want to take a shot at me. Is that like a low-key, like... Humble brag, or is that like a weird flex? I'm not sure what you're doing, but I would say this, everything that I'm saying in this video to your face, Ken. So if you and Dave want to fly me out, and we could talk about what we disagree on. I'd love that, right? I have no qualms saying this to your face or Dave's face or anyone's face, I have no problem, right? But you're just saying like, say it to my face. Well, not everyone has access to do that, but you know, I'd like to do that. So go ahead, fly me out. Fly me out, let me in, let's talk about it, Ken. Because I think for the most part, we're on the same page, but then, then like, you're doing so good. You're, like, you're giving decent advice, right? Like, reasonable advice. And then, and then you do something like this, where it's like, Ken, Ken, st stop, Ken. Stop sounding a little boomer right now, Ken. Think about, would you say it to me if I was in front of you? Yes. Yes, I would. When you think about ghosting somebody in any area of your life, think about, would you do it? If they were directly in front of you. Ken, how do you ghost someone if you're in front of them? You turn around and walk away? You do the Xbox 360 and turn around and walk away? Because most of the time, avoiding confrontation is the better thing to do, right? That's what most people will tell you. Just avoid the confrontation. If it absolutely doesn't need to happen, you know, it's not even worth it. But how you ghost someone if you're literally in front of them? You just turn around and walk away, right? Which, for the most part, is the better thing to do when you start to get heated or have a confrontation. You know, it just... Just turn around, just leave, just walk away, right? Don't let anger get the better better of you. That's what most mature adults would say, but I guess you, you think that you deserve the confrontation if I'm leaving you or something. I'm not sure what the thought process is here, Ken. Now ask yourself, how courageous am I? You're not courageous at all. You are struggling in an area where you need more character. Ken, 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 would you say this to the people's faces that you're roasting right now? Would you say this to their face? Would you tell the people that are ghosting employers and candidates that they're children and that they're lacking character? Would you would you say that to their face? Because you get to sit in a studio just like me and just talk to an audience. I'd be happy to say everything I'm saying right now to you. Would you be happy saying, you're a child, you're lacking courage, you're blowing up bridges like a moron? Would you say that to someone's face? I probably wouldn't even say that. I'd be like, look, man, you, you got to think about it, right? You need to think about this. How much do you respect them? You know, do you need them in any way going forward? Are you moving somewhere else completely different and it doesn't matter, you'll just use a different reference? Like, that's what, that's what I would say. But would you say what you're saying right now to their face? That's what's going on. In an audience this size, I have thrown a rock into a pack of dogs and it hit somebody. Hey, Ken, is that me? Is that me? Because, because that's me probably. Anyways, I'm not a pack of dogs. I'm just here to disagree with you and explain my viewpoint and explain how it, it looks like you're not getting the full picture. I'm not trying to criticize you. I am not trying to hurt your feelings. Wait, that's what kids do. Ch children do this. You're, you're not trying to criticize? Not natural 
if you're a freaking professional. I am trying to tell you that you may get away with that once, twice, three, five times, but you will not get away with that long term. That will come back to haunt you. Good. Come back and haunt me. Come back and haunt me. Good. Because I'm not working at that hell hole anymore. That's what most people are thinking, Ken. And I feel like this is where your ability to relate with your audience diverges away. <laughs> because good that's what they're thinking right whatever i don't need this job if, if this comes back to bite me whatever right i hate my job that much it's not worth it there's something better for me out there whatever I'll, I'll take the risk i'll do it i don't care that's what these people are thinking they have human emotions just like you and i can i'm sure that a lot of people think these things out but maybe some people don't and they're just being dumb and they're just you know just quitting every job and they don't they just don't care and they're being reckless and irresponsible anyways right those people right i, I get it right but a lot of people they, they, <laughs> they think about this for a long time and they tolerate a lot of BS at their job hoping for change and it never happens, so they just stop. Put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants, and walk into the confrontation. Be classy and treat somebody the way you would want to be treated and then walk out and don't worry about what they say about you when you're not there. Because sometimes <laughs> they don't deserve to be treated the way that you would want to be treated, Ken. Have you ever worked a job like that? Because it doesn't sound like you ever have. I, I got news for you. You're not there. Why do we care so much about what somebody's going to say once we leave? We're not there. You're being a hypocrite on your own point here, Ken. You're saying, why do people care so much about what, what they're saying about us if I'm not there? Well, because you need that reference, right, Ken? You, you need to have that reference. And so when your future employer calls this former employer that you're courageously confronting by giving a two weeks notice, you're not going to be there for the phone call when they call, right? And if your job hates you and you hate that job, you're not going to know what they say. You're just, you're going to get ghosted by your future employer, right? And we know this, we know this. Why would I ever give a reference for a job that I knew absolutely hated me? Why would I do that? Because you need that company, as you said, as a reference. I, I get it if you were going to be there and have to hear it, but you're not there. So there's my two cents on that. That was more than two cents, dude. That was like at least a buck 50. That was at least a buck 50, but like not good it was not a good buck 50. anyways guys this is just me responding to ken coleman and what i think ken i'd be happy to sit down and have a discussion with you if you're open to it but like i said i think that we agree on most things but then when you get into the like modern topics of what's going on i think your experience and my life experience are just so different that it makes you unrelatable so anyways, guys, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed the video, share it. Click subscribe if you want to see me uh, take on the corporate world some more or call out some uh, BS when I see it. I'm happy to do so. I know you can't. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What would you say to Ken's face? Your courageous bunch down there in the comments. By the way, I have a second channel. I just released a, like a camera comparison. My phone versus my red. And, uh, trying to get this footage close to a red and it's pretty impressive to be honest so if you're interested in cameras or starting YouTube and just want some advice from me and things I've learned go check it out it's over there on the second channel I'll link that too but um, yeah that's it I hope you guys have a great Friday Ken don't delete this video at least leave this one up okay but that's it see you in the next one